It's Roger once again on the track of a most mysterious mystery. What are electrons? What are light? What is the whole story of this particle, wave, whatever it is? Well, let's look into it. Now, I've been saying that Rodney Warren and I had done some experiments years ago that accelerated light uh, through his Venturi and created these particles after it left the Venturi. It came out certainly as a blurry mass and then settled down into its particle form. Now, what you see in there, I'm saying, is light particles. And I say that because they came from a red laser, they went through a venturi, and when they came out of the venturi, they came out highly excited and they came out like this. So I said, well, whoa, how could this be? What is this black and white and these little spikes sticking up in the air? So, I went a little further. We found the same particles with green. The green laser, the red laser, it's the same exact particle. So now we got a, a, an architecture going on here that is same, different frequency, same particle. So we went a little deeper. So I looked a little deeper at the actual particle, whatever you want to call it, the little mass of energy that appears to be what light is. Now we see dark and we see light. We see a spike coming up and a spike coming down. To me, the darkness indicates no energy or a very small amount of energy and the light indicates more energy. So, I'm thinking to myself, we've got two sets of energy going on here. Now, then I started to think, well, what is this? What, how could this be? Is this a torus? And this is the neck of the torus as it oscillates back and forth. It spikes up through the neck. I just couldn't, couldn't put my finger on it. So I decided, well, what could create this pattern? And then it, it sort of came to me that you're looking at like a, a a magnet here with a positive and a, a positive and a negative and you look at a magnet here with a positive and negative and a magnet here with a positive and negative a magnet here with a positive and negative it's a box magnet it goes right around in a box shape so I'm thinking that's in, <laughs> that's kind of unusual but it is light so it's not simply negative it's not simply positive it appears to be both so lo and behold my friend Luis sends me this all right, this is about cavitation and star in a jar and sonoluminescence, which I understand is that when they shoot off a firecracker underwater, it makes a bigger expansion than the actual chemistry of the firecracker. It creates a cavity in the water, and that cavity will not, it, it, the cavity is completely fills with electrons, electrons only, because there's nothing else in that cavity. Now, when that cavity recompresses and the water comes back and crushes it, there's something with that water, whether it's the molecular um, polar bonding of the water, the positive and negativeness of the polar bond of H2O, or it's the hydrophilic, hydrophobic reaction. Something will not let those electrons back into the water, and they collapse with explosive nature. That is sonoluminescence and cavitation, implosion technology. Very interesting. However, this was what caught my eye. Now let's go into here. In the a top bit. left. Okay. This is what caught my eye. Remember this pattern? Remember that pattern? This is the the energy level of this pattern. Now what is this pattern being made by? There's two bar magnets here side to side with a piece of wire down the center, paper clip actually. And these two bar magnets are being held right in front of a old style TV which had what's called a cathode ray tube in there. And that cathode ray tube sends out electrons all over this panel. And these magnets in this arrangement, which I am saying this looks like exactly the same arrangement I saw in the pictures that we did with the accelerated light and those particles as they slowed down. That is the same pattern. I don't know if it's just a coincidence, but I don't think it's a coincidence. I think what we're seeing, uh, uh, light itself, is a double set of 
of polarities, of magnets, literally. I mean, that's what I'm telling you. That's what I see. That's what you just saw. Now, I'm going to show you what will happen to that light in a different condition here. We'll take it right from the start to the end. It'll only take a couple of minutes and show you how the light comes from the red laser and ends up actually dividing itself. All right, I'm just going to run right through it. This is the light from a red laser, pulse red laser light. The laser pulse is only right dead center in the middle. The rest is concussion waves, just like a jet fighter going through the sound barrier. Now, when it goes through the air, it keeps that standard waveform. Now that we have sent it into a Venturi acceleration device, very simple device, it forces the electron or the light, whatever it is, you call it electron, photon, whatever you want to call it. I'm saying it's a particle, and I'll show you why I can say that. It forces it to crush itself, and these these little particles, which you do not see, own a region around them which is quite large and when it gets compacted against and crushed and concussed it glows and here's why I can say that this is the stretched wave being pulled excited accelerated and crashing into the venturi creating plasma these little tiny white dots are the actual particles this little particle dot stream is the actual laser light these concussed white particles are being forced into the other regions of the other particles that occupy the space in front of them. They concuss, they illuminate. I cannot explain that. However, it is what I see and it is what is understood. That's how light works. It's the concussion of these particles into other particles' regions that are the standard particles that sit in the air. They're extra electrons. They're called aether. They always were called ether. They're extra electrons, and that's the kind of electrons that create lightning. That's how the lightning runs to the Earth. It comes through these electrons. It has to exceed the resistance of the air and then it comes to earth because there's so much of them the potential is so high same as if you walk through air that is heavy with static electricity and you rub it onto yourself or you rub it off of a seat or whatever and you collect it on yourself and then you touch something or you get close to ground the ground sucks those electron electrons right off of you because of that potential difference the electrons jump right Call them light, whatever you want. I'm calling them electrons. And I'm calling these the electrons. Call them photons, it's up to you. But what these different little particles do, and I'm saying they're particles, they're not waves, they're particles. They concuss the other particles that are in the air, which you can see, and you can see them quite easily. Those are those little white particles there, and they are in the air everywhere. And when they get crushed and concussed and forced and it's happening because of this reverse electromagnetic wave that is huge because of this enormous energy interaction All right so we've got accelerated light we've got ether which is concussed and glowing in the atmosphere we've got the particle stream concussing into its own other particles that create their regions and they are now being forced into plasma which is being excited and forced out the other side of the venturi into what they call the interference patterns it has nothing to do with a wavy flappy thing it's because these are all negative well they're all particles that have a net negativity that's all i can say it's a net negativity i see there's positive and negative but there has to be some dominant negativity and I believe there's a net negativity and that net negativity coming out of here forces everyone to get away from each other because they're all basically net negative particles They're negative particles they say get away from me I'm negative you're negative get away from me and they do they get away they get away they get away they get away they get away, they get away. and that's what creates these patterns it's just a natural reaction to trying to get away from each other now what happens when they come out of this venturi is the Higgs field. We're looking into that accelerator right now. It's coming straight at us. These little fibers, these little white filaments, are the what they would call boson particle car uh, charge particle carriers. So it's a charged particle, 
which is the electron or light photon, whatever you want to call it, which I was showing you that came through the accelerator as white blurry light just comes flying through there as excitement of, of, uh, of that particular electron, photon, whatever you call that. And here they are coming and finally smashing into unrestricted space so it's a more of a flat plane of space and then when they smash into it the electrons that are in this space that are not excited they're just sitting there having a nice time when these charged particles come crashing into them they say get out of my way and get out of my way because I'm a spinning negative particle you will also collect around me in a spinning pattern of negative particles negative positive negative positive that's why you see all these little tiny dots that that is the polarity that sets up around the charged particle carrier which is the boson they would call these a Higgs field now what else can happen to these fields they can actually compress themselves against each other this one right here is being crushed you see how that it's being crushed on this side and that side you're seeing this and this are forcing against it and creating a higher energy which is the color and creating a forced field this one over here I believe is a negatively spinning particle which means it's spinning backwards they should spin in a right hand spin that's the nature of of the normal magnetic fields that one doesn't have a magnetic field there's no field around it these are the particle is in the tent center of these little circles so tiny that you will never see it however the field is what's obvious this one here the particle is what you see because it is so highly excited spinning backwards it doesn't create a field so what happens when this thing ends up finishing its life let's see what that happens there okay that's that little white particle you see it right there and what ended up happening is it collided with a field that surrounds another tiny particle you don't see the particle you just see the fields now that one didn't have a field at all that's the white one there was no field but it was extremely excited and, and hot and energetic now what I see is that particle coming through here now I don't know if this dark spot which is right next to it is related to this particle in other words is it drawing in the magnetic fields I don't know but I can see what it is doing is it's created some form of a pattern there that is very similar to these fields here the lower field you know these other fields and that pattern is beginning to display here now this is what I'd like to have explained what is that particle what is this is that a particle if these are particles then that must be a particle but it's not a complete particle because if these were particles they came all from the same place and I believe they were all the same type of particles, only this one was spun backwards and these spun forwards. And then this has to be something less than this. And I would think something less than this. Because if this and this came from the same source, which was the red laser, and they came out of the accelerator, and we did see that, and they came to here and then they did this I'm saying that this particle and this particle that were from the same source now something has changed and created this now what that is I don't know but this needs to be investigated it really does because this is not silly and not only that with the the Venturi accelerator I don't see any reason why we couldn't accelerate you know heavy particles into this accelerator and then put something uh, on this way so that they were forced in to a receiving unit which would would 
collect those helium and turn them into heliums. In other words, you send out heavy hydrogen, turn it into helium after it goes into plasma because it will come back to its most stable state, which is helium. It will give off one of the f five different nuclear particles. Let's put it that way, which is a ton of uh, electricity. Because I say they're electrons and they are not neutrons. All right, because if it gave off the neutrons, who cares? They're nothing. They're neutral. <laughs> and there is no neutrons. So it's time to investigate this. The atomic model's wrong. So go up to Mud Fossil University, look at the, what I'm presenting. And it's not just, it's not even theories. It's just, it's, it's, it's there. It's the truth. It's what is, it, if you can dispute it, dispute it. Dispute it. That's what I want. I want somebody to investigate it. If it's wrong, it's wrong. I don't think it's wrong. All right, I've been a little aggressive lately about this because I, the stone wall that academia has put up on every single thing of our history, of our past, of energy, of everything. And I'm saying that they are incompetent. The academic double slit is absolutely an incompetent conclusion onto what that was. And physicists have to address this to be relevant. You have to address these things that I am saying to be relevant. You're no longer relevant. That's what my claim is. Be relevant. Tell me that I'm wrong. Show me that I'm wrong. Show the world that I'm wrong. Don't hide.